The Chargers offense was cooking on Sunday Night Football. We'll tell you if that's here to stay on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Hillsdale College. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. On today's show, we're going to talk about some of the biggest winners coming out of week 11. Not a ton of losers, actually, this week. So we're going to stay positive on today's show. But Kate, I want to start with the Chargers offense, which they scored 34 points. Yes, I know it's against the Bengals offense so or defense, so don't get too excited. <laughs> but I want to talk about first impressions a little bit because when we saw this offense early in the season it wasn't all that exciting they were struggling to put up points 10 points against pittsburgh 10 points against kansas city uh, only 22 against the raiders and one of the reasons why was because of the health of justin herbert he suffered a was a plantar fasciitis uh injury to his foot in training camp missed a lot of training camp and then against the Panthers, suffered a high ankle injury. Against the Steelers, he re-aggravated it. And it took him a long time to get healthy. But I think what we've seen over the last four games or so, he's finally starting to look, look, to look like the Justin Herbert that we, we've known to come and love. Oh, here's what they, the points they've scored the last four weeks. 26, 27, 27, 34. Is this going to continue to stay with Herbert now that he's healthy? Here's the thing. It's not just Herbert being healthy, which like that I think is a huge, huge part of it. You also have the fact that, uh, you know, in general, it, like not just being healthy, but he's using his legs more. Like let's talk about um, some of that rushing production that he's had as of late. Uh, Marcus, there have been five games in his career where he has had 49 or more rushing yards. Two of them have been in the last month. Like, we're seeing yeah. a different side of Justin Herbert, which I do think is a, you know, a product of him being healthy, but it also opens up the offense in new ways because Justin Herbert has not made the money in his career based on his legs. It has been on his arms, but I mean, should we be surprised that like in a Greg Roman offense, we're seeing Justin Herbert unlock the legs a little bit. I don't know. Like it, it's working. Um, you also have Lad McConkey, who I'm going to be honest, like giving me like mild palpitations every time he steps on the football field because they just want him to stay healthy. But like, I know. it's terrifying. He looks good, right? Like he's generating separation. He's doing all the things that we thought he would do. So like, I do think this is here to stay because it's not like these are all random products of production like it, it you know we're not looking at a really bad quarterback who's producing really well no we're looking at a really good quarterback with a really good you know wide receiver one albeit a rookie um we're looking at you know a, a wide receiver two and Quentin Johnston who's coming into his own a little bit like I don't know how many times you could take advantage of busted coverage before like maybe you're just getting open right like well, okay my point was like <laughs> If this if these if this season was switched, right, and this happened earlier in the year, and then Justin Herbert got hurt at the end, I think we'd be even more excited about this Chargers offense. But because we kind of remember that first month of the season, maybe a little too well, um, we're not yeah. factoring in how good this offense really is. And I I, I agree. I want to talk about Lab McConkey, who has now gone over at least fifty receiving yards in four straight games. This is his second one hundred yard receiving game. In the last four weeks, the injuries are concerning. I, I watched that game, and every time he catches the ball and lands, I I wince a little bit. So does he. It, it, so does so does he. <laughs> um, it, it feels like this is a perfect fit with Justin Herbert. It really does, and it just feels like offensively, um, 
vibes wise, like it seems like this entire organization is headed in a really good direction. So like, I don't know if I fully believe in like, you know, Quentin Johnston as a first round pick, right? I, I'm, I'm not buying in there, no, no. but you can't deny the fact that like, Yes, they drafted a pretty raw receiver out of TCU who like had a lot of really great physical traits that maybe needed to learn more of the nuances of you know the, the wide receiver position specifically. Um, but this is an offense that we've seen an increase in their overall passing production coming out of the bye. Um, didn't once hit 30 pass attempts in a single game before the bye. Uh, and now they're averaging 31 uh, attempts per game in the yeah. six games coming out of the bye. Like we're seeing a, a greater emphasis on the pass. We're seeing Justin Herbert more involved with his legs. I think this offense is the real deal. Um, and I do think that right now, because of that, those struggles early on in the season, you could probably get them at a bit of a discount. Like let's not forget Justin Herbert, his dynasty value was at an all time low this off season. And I have to admit, I like I I went in on on Justin Herbert in a, a startup draft, and I was kind of shaking in my boots. I I drafted him, I think, as the the twelfth quarterback off the board, um, just because like make the bet on the really good and talented quarterback, and I feel like that's paying off. So we actually have a a new batch of Dynasty ADP thanks to DynastyLeagueFootball.com, which we'll be talking about later in this week. Do you want to guess where Justin Herbert is going into the month of November? Um, like I remember we've had, we've had some injuries. QB 14? QB 11. So actually, Dynasty managers have been a little bit more proactive here. So I think that's that. pr probably about right. Um, yeah, so overall, good game for the Chargers. Uh, Lab McConkie, you want to you guess where Lad is at among receivers right now? Mm, wide receiver 35. Again, Dynasty players have been in on Lab McConkey. Wide receiver 24, which is wow. the highest that he's ever been ahead of players like T. Higgins, Debo Samuel, Xavier Worthy. Now, just to be clear, those aren't my rankings. No, no, no. These are my dynasty. Rankings. These are draft. Me yeah. yeah. Um, really quickly before we move on, let's at least talk about the Bengals side of this thing. Joe Burrow was awesome. Chase Brown had another big game, 22 carries for 86 yards, added in 57 yards in the receiving game. T. Higgins, who you know I've been a little up and down on, it comes back from the injury after missing three games with a quad injury, nine catches for 148 yards and a touchdown. He looked awesome, and I, I'm probably going to get burned by T. Higgins every single week because whenever you feel confident to start him, he kills you, and then other weeks it's rough. So what do we do with T. Higgins? I mean, we we had this conversation. I think this was just this past week, uh, our Wednesday episode with Matt, where we did our mailbag about what do you do and what do you make of T. Higgins? And the general consensus is that there's not a lot of places that he could go that he could lose a tremendous amount of value because you know he's probably right. going to get paid. Um, you know that like when he is on the field, he is productive, albeit like Again, much like Lad McConkey, every time he gets the ball, I'm like, you know, I I wince a little bit. They he had a little injury scare there himself. Um, I think you like you know be cautiously optimistic about T Higgins, but know that yeah, there's a, a question mark about the availability, probably on a weekly basis there. Yeah. But when he's playing on the field, you start him as a, a wide receiver too with upside. All right. Let's talk about some young quarterbacks that performed really well in week 11. And let's just, let's start with Anthony Richardson who made his return to the field. We will get to him next. This episode is brought to you by Hillsdale college. Time is our most precious commodity. So don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. Do something that you can actually help to improve yourself. Hillsdale College is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Constitution 101, The Meaning and History of the Constitution, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, 
the rise and fall of the Roman Republic, and so much more. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, and discussions, or just kick back and enjoy the lectures. I like listening to them when I'm on my morning walk or when I'm taking my kids to daycare in the morning. It's really it's really convenient. It's so nice. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. Hillsdale.edu slash locked on. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less than at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in most states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So your lineup stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Download the Price Picks app today. Use promo code LOCKEDONNFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Get Download the app today. Use promo code LOCKEDONNFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price Picks run your game. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are breaking down the biggest winners coming out of Week 11. And Kate, let's let's talk about Anthony Richardson, who was left for dead by the Colts. They decided to bring him back out against Aaron Rodgers. I, I think the idea of starting two 39-year-old quarterbacks was too much for the NFL to handle. <laughs> game. The, the combined age of two starting quarterbacks should never be higher than um, like double 75. the point total. Uh, yeah. projected on any given right. week, right? Yeah, that uh, correct. Yes. Uh, so Anthony Richardson in this game, 20 of 30, 272 yards. This is only the second time in his career that he's completed more than 17 passes in a game. Uh, threw a touchdown, had two rushing touchdowns, 32 yards on the ground. More importantly, though, Kate, Colts got the win, and he had a game-winning touchdown drive with like 30 seconds left of the clock. I think this goes a long way to helping his confidence. Oh, for, for sure. Uh, 272 passing yards. That is like by far a career high here for Anthony Richardson. Um, you know, it, again, it wasn't like a hugely um, try. It, he didn't have a Joe Burrow game, but I think what you saw is things looked a little bit easier. Um, you saw like, it, I think the, the stat that probably exhibits this perfectly 38.7% of pass attempts went past the first down marker this week. And let me read you what, what an average Anthony Richardson experience looks like in terms of percentage of throws past the first down marker, which can usually be some of these riskier, more problematic showings, right? Yeah. 65%, 50%, 38.1%, 75%, 52%, 60.6%. 64.3%. Like that's an average Anthony Richardson experience. But I think what we saw was just a little bit settled, um, a, a little bit more uh, willing to take some layups. And another stat I want to point out, a career high 54.5% of plays were under play action. And I think play action is just a really good way to settle your quarterback. Yeah, I, I thought he looked really good in this game. Uh, now, again, this is the Jets defense that has been torched all season long by the likes of Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray uh, in the last couple of weeks. It's not a great defense, but still, it was just nice to see Richardson play well. It was nice to see Josh Downs get more involved in this game. Michael Pittman still battling through it, a back injury, but... They for showed somebody, like Yeah, for, for somebody who... Again, on Dynasty League football, QB 20 going into the month of November. For somebody who was kind of left for dead and that we were wondering if we were going to ever see him again this year, to put together this performance, three touchdowns, no interceptions, did have one fumble, is highly encouraging. 
for sure. Um, you've got to be, you've got to be excited. And do I really feel like I have an understanding of where this organization stands with Anthony Richardson? No, because it was just kind of a very weird. It was a very yeah. weird uh, thing to to happen. Period. Um, so, like that, still gives me a moment of pause. But I also know that if the Colts are out on Anthony Richardson, there's probably a ton of people that are in. Um, I've been one of the bigger Anthony Richardson skeptics just because of, you know, some of the issues that we saw that led to his very benching, but you know, all the, the tools are there. It's just a matter of having an organization that's going to be patient enough to allow him to develop those tools and refine the skills that make him such an explosive quarterback to begin with. All right. Let's talk about my guy, Bo Nix, um, who had an awesome game today. Actually, Got a Bo Nix rookie card right here. Uh, all right, B Bo Nix, 28 of 33, 307 yards, 85% completion percentage, four passing touchdowns in this game. Okay, this is the second time in four weeks where Bo Nix has totaled four touchdowns in a single game. I don't want to get too carried away here, but every week that goes by, Sean Payton is looking smarter and smarter by drafting Bo Nix here early in round one. This Denver team is not bad. They were a blocked field goal away from being, what, seven and four, right? And taking down the Chiefs. Um, they absolutely obliterated Atlanta, and Bo Nix looks like the real deal. And I mean, Bo Nix, he has come. I mean, can we like go back? Um, and this is not that long ago, but I, I still want to go back to uh, like, week one era of the Bo Nix experiment where he averaged 3.3 yards per pass attempt. Um, I don't think there's anybody that we've seen probably take as big a leap in the second half of this portion of the season right here. Like, yeah, I mean, absolutely kind of an incredible jump through the month of October into November. Um, we are seeing incredibly high passing efficiency, what I think is really exciting too over the past two weeks haven't seen a lot of that involvement uh, as a runner on the ground um, over the, the past two weeks combined five carries, zero rushing yards. Like uh, that hasn't really been a factor of his game. Teams have limited him in that respect, but he's still finding other ways to get it done. Um, Bo Nix, probably an underrated quarterback. And we talked about the personnel that they have available to them. Like, when you can get this kind of production out of Lil Jordan Humphrey, Marvin Mims, Troy Franklin, Nate Adkins, who I don't even know who that is. Like, who are you? And like, you are, I don't know. Like, remember, this is the year. That, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, but. This was the year that they were taking all the dead cap hit on Russell Wilson. Right. And they thought this would be the reset year. Okay. You look at the AFC wildcard picture, like, it's going to be really hard for them not to be in the playoffs in year one of Bo Nix. And you're right to separate like the first month of the season. He was not very good. Uh, I, I've got the numbers right here. The first four games of the year. Oh gosh. Uh, this is rough. He was completing, he was completing 55% of his passes. He was averaging 165 passing yards a game. 0.3 touchdowns and one interception per game first four weeks. It really felt like he wasn't an NFL quarterback, but Kate from starting in October over the last seven games, he's averaging 230 passing yards per game, 13 touchdowns, passing touchdowns, two interceptions, averaging about 30 rushing yards on the game uh, on the ground, uh, two rushing touchdowns as well. He's really starting to look like, somebody that can be an every week starter in your fantasy lineup. And while some of the games they have coming up, I don't know how you leave him out of your starting lineup. No, I think like to this point, what he's shown as both a passer and as a runner, I think you just fire him up and you know what? I'm going to hope that there are some defenses out there looking at his recent passing production, maybe to let off the gas a little bit in terms of covering the run and Bo Nix is, you know, just finding multiple ways to get that done. I think it's super encouraging. Um, you love to see the the progression, especially like, you know, after the bye. Like this is a team that I think is is starting to piece things together. 
I know you're not a Sean Payton fan, but it it's definitely looking like a. Oh, he was smart on this one. Okay, we, last week we talked about players that had a favorable schedules kind of down the stretch. Listen to the Broncos' final, their final five games of the fantasy season. Okay, at Raiders, you can get the Raiders. Home Browns, we've seen how bad that Browns defense is. Mm -hmm. uh, home Colts at Chargers, now, that's a really hard one. Finish the fantasy season with at Bengals, who can't stop a nosebleed right now. Like <laughs> Bo Nix, it would not surprise me at all over these next five or six weeks if he's at like a top six, top seven fantasy quarterback moving forward. Yeah, I think if you've got Bo Nix uh, in your fantasy playoffs, you're probably going to be really happy here. Um, now, let's just say, it, like, for Bo Nix, if you had to stack him with one of these guys who might be in your waiver None wire, of them. None of them. No? Okay. It, I, I just think Sean Payton wants to use a different weapon every single week. Like, it's probably depending on the matchup. Uh, he He's not even committed to a running back. Like, we thought Audric Estime was going to get a lot of work oh. this week. Nothing. So, no, I, I just want Bo Nix and his ability to spread the football around. Last thing before we move on. Um, Bo Nix QB 15 on dynasty league football right now, quarterbacks ahead of him, Baker Mayfield, Brock Purdy, Drake may Are you taking Nix over any of those guys. I'll take him over, um, Baker Mayfield. Okay. So QB 14, I, I think I'm with you as well. Uh, quite the rise for Bo Nix, who was QB 26, 27 to start the maybe, year. Now he's a maybe offensive rookie of the year. I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. The narrative isn't surrounding him right now, but yeah. uh, let's talk about the actual offensive rookie of the year. Kate Brock Bowers. Is there anyone close to him at the tight end position? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets. If you win, the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, like I did yesterday, Kate, when it was 9-7 to seven and Pittsburgh was going in at halftime, I jumped on FanDuel. I'm like, okay, Pittsburgh's probably a big favorite. No, Baltimore was favored. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make sense at all. Bet on Pittsburgh to win the game outright. And, of course, they came through at the end. Uh, Steelers have been really helping the bankroll this year. But on FanDuel, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You can get started with $150 of bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out the new Locked On NFL show. Two shows every single day. One in the morning with Tyler Rowland. One in the afternoon with Tony Wiggins. Uh, both of those guys cover two pretty bad AFC South team. So I can sympathize with them and empathize with them because of how, how bad my team is, but go check out the new lot done NFL, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, okay. Let's talk about Brock Bowers who once again, put up another monster game against Miami. He's the only thing that the, the Raiders have going right now, 13 catches for 126 yards, one touchdown on 16 targets did get a carry in this game as well. We know Brock Bowers is tight end one. My question to you is, is the gap between Brock Bowers and tight end two bigger than the gap among any other position, quarterback, running back, wide receiver? Yes, period. Um, I mean, like, I I just, I, I don't know that I can present, like, a, a good argument saying the opposite, which, like, I, I can come up with an argument for anything. Um, so the fact that I, I can't really come up with any talking points to argue that the gap is so much wider for Brock Bowers. Now, let's not forget, like coming out of last year, tight end one in Dynasty was Sam Laporta coming off an absolutely stunning, stunning rookie campaign. At this point last year, Marcus, Sam Laporta had scored just over 100 fantasy points on the mm -hmm. year through 11 weeks. Brock Bowers is at 124.5 fantasy points right now. And 
touchdowns have not been something that is overly plentiful. Uh, let's just say that like touchdowns have not been at the ready. Uh, he's scored three so far this season, but like in general, you're looking at, I think the perfect combination of production size, age, weight, athleticism, skill set, opportunity. Like there is nobody set up for success at this position. Like, you know, this offense here and Brock Bowers and what they're looking to do with him. Cause he is pretty much wide receiver one in this offense. I think that's why they drafted him as highly as they did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, looking at even the Sam Laporta situation, like how do we know we're not getting Sam Laporta? Well, we already knew that Brock Bowers had this kind of generational skill set in terms of what right. he can do after the catch. We knew that was his game. We thought, you know, the only reason we had downgraded his overall status, you had been in on him as tight end one before he ever stepped on the football field, but it was the question marks about the situation. Well, I think they've told us what they think about the situation. And I think we can look at the weaponry and say, all right, it seems like they're going to build this offense around Brock Bauer specifically. So right now, On the season, Brock Bowers has 70 receptions. That is the second most among all players in the NFL. The only player that has more is Jamar Chase, and he's played a full game more than than Bowers. So once the Bengals have their bye here in Week 12, Bowers is going to pass him. Bowers is going to be, as long as he stays healthy, is going to be the third tight end ever to have 1,000 yards as a rookie on a team that has went from Gardner Minshew to Aiden O'Connell to Gardner Minshew. To Desmond Ritter, back to Gardner Minshew. They were going to start Desmond Ritter this week, but he was so bad in practice that they had to go back to Gardner Minshew. Eventually, there's going to be some stability at quarterback, and it might not even be great. Like They might get like the 21st best passer in the NFL, and that's going to be a massive upgrade for Brock Bowers. Um, I think you can make an argument right now that Brock Bowers is the most valuable fantasy asset or dynasty asset in the league, he's not going to be the highest scoring receivers and tight ends or sorry, running backs and receivers are going to score more than him. But the gap between him and whoever you call tight end two is so significant that I think you can justify spending a first round pick in your startup drafts on Brock Bowers. Even in non non tight end premium. Yes, absolutely. Well, right now, Kate, going into the month of November and again, since November has started. Bowers has had some monster games. He was already being drafted as a 13th overall player in these startup drafts. I don't see why that would change. And like some of the names of guys that are being drafted ahead of him include Brees Hall and Brian Thomas. Yeah. I mean, he's getting elite wide receiver one usage. Like if you told me any wide receiver would have 10 plus targets in three of their last five games, I'd be like, Oh, sign me up. Uh, when you get that kind of advantage at the tight end uh, position, like there hasn't been a a guy that we're going to see with this kind of floor. Um, like I, I, you're all in, right? Like, I, I don't know what else you can possibly say about what he's produced. Um, yeah, obviously ideal circumstances in terms of like the talent around him, but like, let's not sniff at Jacoby Myers either a a really talented wide receiver. And, you know, they're dealing with, they're having to do a lot more with a lot less in terms of the quarterback play and what they're able to do in terms of ball movement and consistency. So like, yeah, this kind of production from Brock Bowers, I don't think we can, we can turn our heads away from that. By the way, that was a little sneak preview. Brian Thomas, wide receiver eight right now in Dynasty League's 10 overall. We will break down the latest batch of ADP from Dynasty League football over the course of the next week, so make sure you tune in for that. And go download the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Follow Kate on Twitter, at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. And try try to enjoy Monday Night Football or don't watch. I don't I don't care either way. It doesn't really bother me. <laughs> you don't uh, watch. We'll see, I, 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 I have to watch, unfortunately. But we'll break it all down for you on Tuesday. We'll see you then.